Hi, so today I'm here with Wayney. She's a student at Western Washington University, and um, we're going to talk today about social justice in higher education. So, Wayney, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm Wayney, and I'm currently a senior, finishing my last quarter at Western, uh, studying communication studies and, in, and a, having a minor in international studies. Um, a little bit about myself, I am active within our Black Student Union on campus. I also um, enjoy, just on my pastime, enjoy um, reading, writing poetry, journaling, and just spending time with my friends and family and enjoying some sunshine when we get it. Great. All right, so my first big question um, would be, what does social justice mean to you? I think that's a good question. That's something I think about a lot. Uh, social justice really means advocating for something that anyone believes in or say I believe in and actually putting action towards making that change that you want to see either through your personal choices or, or being, um, being an advocate to create um, more equity, especially in terms of education or any other sectors in life. Yeah, great. Um, so what are some ways that you do that in your daily life? Oh, well, something I think about is like activism within social justice and um, prior I've grappled with that being something that's like loud and having to be um, very um, action oriented, you know, um, holding signs, trying to get people to understand your perspective. Um, but something I've realized is that being first generation, um, student of color, uh, on campus, activism, um, being a student on our campus is a form of resistance and is a form of activism in my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think my participation within the Black Student Union, but particularly with um, Student Assembly for Power and Liberation, something we've been working towards within these past um, few months, is something that I do to, um, to change our current structures of power on our campus. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Students for Power and Liberation? Yeah, um, so SAPL is our short um, acronym for Student Assembly for Power and Liberation, and um, we came together due to um, the stuff that went down in fall 2015, I want to say, uh, with the, the, the deemed hate speech um, towards a black leader on our campus and towards um, black, po uh, black students at large on our, on our university. We want to really um, redeem what happened and really um, demand accountability of our um, administration on our campus and also to really let that not be forgotten and it gave us a good platform to really use that as a way to say uh, these aren't isolated events these are systemic and have been occurring for a long time here on this university uh, listen to us as students and 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 deem our vo use our voices um, in actual decision-making processes, not just as a, a way to um, silence us mm -hmm. in an interesting way. Yeah. What has the response been like from both students and faculty? Uh, the overarching um, response has been really negative. It's been, you, you all are demanding too much and very radical and you all are wasting your time in what you all are doing and, and you're whining about something, but um, hasn't been very supportive from our, our our petition that we put out with a goal of a thousand signatures. Um, I think we've reached like 550 signatures now, mm -hmm. I want to say, with um, really some supportive comments, but overarching negative comments, mm -hmm. but isn't a surprise to many of us because um, that's what the system needs to do. The system, when when you when you ask for things that you are deserving of, or need, or should have, mm -hmm. that's how white supremacy works. You come against the people and say you're asking for too much. You don't deserve it, mm -hmm. and what you're saying is ridiculous. So, kind of what we've gotten at Western. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that I don't know. That's super disappointing to me, for sure, because I support the group and, and what y'all need, because the majority of this campus has been supported. 
this whole time and I feel like it's time to kind of step up for those have, who have been um, put in the margins for sure. Yeah. Um, so are there any other ways that you promote social justice at Western besides being a part of this group? Uh, I would say my presence in a lot of my classes, I try, I mean, it sucks that you have to be the only, you know, being in the margins, being a person of color, being a woman, being, you know, holding these identities that you, uh, make me often feel alone, having to constantly speak up and be the one, but hey, I do it, and I think that's a way of forming social justice, at least um, bringing these ideas into the classroom and having these, talk, uh, like, um, bringing these perspectives up to students that may not have thought about it. Um, I think is my chance to disrupt and intervene mm -hmm. on, you know, dominant, dominant narratives. Mm -hmm. So talking specifically about your experience with the Black Student Union and the Student Assembly for Power and Liberation, um, do you think that Western um, and the faculty and administration within Western does what they can to support um, marginalized students and to promote social justice for those who need it? No, I would be lying if I said yeah to that question. I, based on my personal experience, like I haven't felt supported. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt like there was institutional support for me personally to stay retained within the institution nor for anyone that looks like me. Um, I think the university does a great job of um, promoting that they that they um, are inclusive and and are um, in support of diversity. What I what I want to know is like what diversity means to them and the way that they're tossing the terms around of diversity, inclusion, and you know equity. It's like it's not been working, mm -hmm. and I think there needs to be um, new ways of actually targeting the most disenfranchised, most marginalized students on this campus so that they do have um, more resources um, for them to succeed on this campus. Um, and what are ways do you think that Western can do that? Um, money. Mm -hmm. They can, um, you know, toss some of that money that they have within the foundation or, I mean, the university has a ton of money and I know that financial uh, setbacks are something that a lot of students of color are disproportionately affected by. Mm -hmm. And so if they cared, they would, you know, create a different system outside of FAFSA, which also is very disruptive to students that are undocumented, students that, you know, those like the standards of what poverty looks like is different for every family. So I think if Western created scholarships outside of the MAP scholarship, like something just more, you know, mm -hmm. um, and also resources on campus set so that these students know that you are there. At the way that it stands now, it's like, this is what Western does, but students do, in reality don't know how they can, you know, um, actually gain the support that they need and do something to actually retain the students. Mm -hmm. Like you want more students of color, Find a way to actually keep and make the students of color satisfied on your campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a big issue for sure. One thing I researched a lot is about first generation college students, um, and I'm a first generation college student myself, but I'm privileged in other ways, uh, being white, um, being middle class. Um, but it tends to be that first generation college students, especially students of color, don't make it past their first year and don't end up graduating. Um, so I, that's something that I personally would really like to see is definitely support for specifically those students, but then just for students of color in general, helping with the emotional and financial support for sure. It was actually interesting. There was a recent, recent, um, uh, Kate or like post that Bruce Shepard actually done in his recent blog talking about retention. And I think our president has a lot of pressures to um, write and like produce content on these things that are very like um, trendy, like retention, mm -hmm. like wanting a lot of students of color. And in his ar article, basically, he's talking about how he doesn't think retention is, is important to talk about in, ter in terms of like looking at whether or not students coming in their freshman year are retained through through their senior year and graduate, but rather thinks it's important to look at 
um, whether or not these students are making it from their first quarter of their freshman year into their sophomore year. Mm. That gap, that year is like what's really important or whatever. And um, still brings it in the end that like, you know, basically students of color are not disproportionately affected in comparison to white students. Like they're mm. doing just fine kind of with these statistics. And there's just not a lot of transparency with these stats. Like yeah. students of color know from their experience, other students of color that they saw their freshman year were not, were not around. Mm. At least I can speak from that. And so just being truthful with the numbers oh, yeah. is something that's like really, I, I can't trust the numbers. And statistics are often used as ways to like really, um, to lie. Right. Well, because most of the time these research studies are being done by older white middle class males, and so there's definitely a lack of uh, transparency and truth within that, for sure, because of the people who are doing these studies and because of the people who they're involving in these studies and the students are actually, that are participating, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Have you heard much about the new president that's going to be coming in next year? I heard, I've heard a little bit. I haven't been too involved in that. I know that there was like, I can't remember his name, Sabah something, man of color coming from OSU, Oregon State University. And they brought, the Board of Trustees brought him as a scout and, and did this whole facade talking about like, we're bringing our, pre our new president scout, you know, like, kind of for students to have and uh, like to kind of feel him out and see if they're, they they like him or mm -hmm. would be interested in actually, um, I don't know, electing him in. Uh, but my, even though I didn't attend that event, my take on that is, um, from what I've heard, is the man is a politician and isn't really interested in like, wasn't really answering questions that were directed towards him on whether he, or not he'd be interested in supporting students of color and like, you know, things that are going on on campus in regards to like a new multi multicultural center or SAPL related anything. And that whole um, idea of like the president, there's really no student voice in that process. It seems like, like what about the other candidates? Were there more than one? Why is it that we're only hearing about one? Board of Trustees selected this guy and was like, okay, we're going to bring him so that people get to so that he can tour our campus and meet students. And then what? He's our president. You know, like, there's just lack of transparency once again. Yeah. I don't think any student voice was put in that. And how are we on time? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just think, I mean, again, I think it's going to be something geared towards, like, this progress thing. Like, we have a man of color. Great. Like, we are progress, you know? Maybe it's the first man of color or person of color, period, in this position at Western Washington University. And it's, like, just because we have the overarching representation of a person of color, we got to know what their politics are. Mm -hmm. Man of color might have internalized white supremacy and be siding with, you know, not interested in actually... Um, critically inspecting those issues of um, inequity within education. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think this transition at this particular time is so interesting because of all the things that have been happening, especially with students of color on campus. Um, yeah, the transition between the presidents and having a man of color come, I think, is a really interesting statement, almost to for sure like putting up that facade being like oh we are progress we're oh, yeah. having this man of color come in and be our president but is he really going to represent the students in the way that he should because what I found is that through administration and policy is that the student voice is often forgotten and especially of those who are more marginalized and it's just interesting and I'd I definitely would like to see more student voice in those kinds of decisions, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's important too, it's like how do we get student voice involved when we're already dealing with a very bureaucratic structure of like the associated students. Many students don't have any idea, I've never actually worked for the associated students, I only know information sort of because of, you know, my, my friends and people I'm associated with that are, you know, in, involved, but it's like how how do we function within this structure that's already meant to exclude, designed not for students to really have voice, designed for like six people, even then, not really, you know what I mean? It's just not really, I think, sustainable or designed for student voices to be heard within this structure. Mm -hmm. 
meant to exploit workers and their time, their energies, and it's a lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sad to me that even in a program and a system within higher education that's supposed to be about students, I feel like generally it's not. And I, that's so backwards and hypocritical, mm-hmm. for sure, and disappointing to me. Because you think, or at least this is what I was always told, is that you come to college, like, everything's great, like, you get this awesome education, and you go out into the world, and everything's better for you, but I feel like for a lot of students, they can't even get here, but then once they're here, they're oppressed by the system that only works for a certain population, and it's just upsetting even within like the student-centered organizations for sure definitely yeah okay so my next question is a little complicated um but basically i'm coming from the space um and the idea that universities were built to privilege certain people and a disadvantage other people um and otherized people yeah um, yeah and um, they were built on this colonial, on colonialist ideals um, that that favor white people over people of color. Um, how do you begin to fight for underrepresented students within these spaces, whether it be students of color, students of lower socioeconomic status, LGBTQ students, um, et cetera? How do you begin to fight? for these students and change the system that has supported and ingrained these colonialist and racist ideas um, since the beginning, since their creation? Yeah, that's a really complex question. (laughs) Um, But my way of tackling or um, trying to start to like change something that's been deeply embedded into our society, being in like a living in like a racist um, society, like within a white supremacist, sexism, sexist, homophobic, all these things, meaning we, we don't necessarily need the homophobic or the racist people to live in this society. It still functions without them. Um, I think uh, would require like faculty really looking at their curriculum and um, trying to make it break free from these structures. Like, what is it that they're um, in, in, like, what is it that they're doing to disrupt the, the white supremacy, basically? It's like, okay, a lot of this curriculum was, was, Um, structured this way of like what's out there some of the greatest theorists or whatever happen to be white males cool but what are you doing to like actually find these other narratives that aren't that aren't being um, being um, shared within your realm of study regardless and I think that's a place for faculty to start Um, like what risks are you taking like we don't reach we don't reach justice without without risking anything are you willing to really go against the grain from everyone whether it's in your department are you willing to be like exiled like isolated in your way of thinking in your way of doing to really promote the greater good for the people that you know that that um that could it could benefit and i think another thing that that comes to mind too um in doing this work would be um, really questioning and a lot of these questions that you actually asked me um, for the for the the stakeholders and the people on campus that say they're doing this work. It's like really deeply reflecting on what social justice means to you. And I think one of your questions earlier or, uh, that I read was, you know, who are you advocating for? What is it that you're doing that's changing things? Are you are you changing things? you know, maybe your capacity is only within the classroom based on your certain circumstances. What is it that you're you're reaching out to the students that you're having contact with to change their way of thinking or to promote something greater? Or are you just contributing to like this 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 deeply embedded structure? Are you furthering um, the the really messed up ideology that's being out there, you know? Um, so yeah, I think like actually doing what you say you do, because I think there's a lot of people on our campus that say, that they are for social justice, equity, and 
inclusion. It's like make your spaces more inclu- inclusive for these different identities and be willing to be uncomfortable um, and confront anything that you have to on a personal level um, in order to do this work. Yeah, that's something I for sure think is super important. Like. In human services, I feel like the program prides ourselves on having these difficult conversations, which isn't always true, um, but I do think we do have the space to have more difficult conversations than maybe other majors, and we are given some of the tools to help have these conversations, but what are faculty members, even in the human services program and around campus doing to make sure that students are critically thinking about these systems and these structures of institutionalized oppression and what are they doing to talk about it in these classes. Um, I think for sure you're like, that's super important. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot you asked something about like, what would I promote and what would I, you know, say or something? Um, I know that uh, there are some great classes that you can take on campus, maybe. I mean, this is my last quarter, but I've been able to take uh, critical race theory and education uh, with one of the professors in the um, education social justice minor and really just trying to get things that are countering and disrupting uh, this, the dominant structures, racist structures in GURs, in like earlier lower division classes. Like it shouldn't be um, someone's last quarter, last class, last, you know, to, to really gain exposure to some of these concepts and it should be accessible and it would mean like dismantling anything on our campus that really, yeah, like I said earlier, that contributes to this white supremacist um, standpoint, similar to like what we have in Woodring, I think it's called Campus to Campus, mm-hmm. um, that would require like dismantling a system like that, which um, solely, op- which like foundationally operates on trying to help and save broken, otherized individuals, which from my viewpoint, that's what Western seems to stand um, stand by. So it would just require like changing that and actually showing that Western truly cares. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, and I, uh, something that I'm super passionate about is getting a class like so in human services we take diversity and social justice and I think that's a great class to introduce a lot of these ideas and for sure I feel like people should continue to learn continue to go deeper Mm -hmm. but I think that having a GUR like that would be crucial in changing people's ideologies when they come into higher education because you can easily not take a class about race at all when you're in Western. Like you could easily not take a class about gender and sexism and heterosexism and things like that um, and just remain in like your comfortable little bubble and not have these difficult conversations. Um, But I don't think people should remain in those bubbles at all. And I don't think that people will, I don't think people will step outside of their comfort zone unless they're forced to. So I think for sure like GURs and then having professors implement it in classes no matter what, like always thinking about how you can change change these ideas um, for the better. Totally. Yeah. I totally agree with you in terms of like gaining exposure earlier. Part of it's like structurally, systemically, they don't want us to learn about our own histories um, in terms of like marginalized students, students of color. Uh, and then also on the other side of it, it's like white students just want to be comfortable in their, you know, the same socioeconomic background because like the mainstream feels comfortable and deviating from that would be challenging or, you know, of less interest, which kind of, um, as I'm getting ready to graduate, kind of like I I wouldn't say it makes me nervous, but I just know like entering the workplace and the workforce, you're inevitably going to be working with people, um, maybe not many, but you're going to be working with people that have differing opinions, different um, from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And while these discussions may not be related to work, they probably will be coming, will come up and we have to find a way to um, work with each other. But then also the fight just becomes harder because it's so deeply ingrained and some people aren't as aware of like the need to um, diverge from like these systems and I don't know it's kind of challenging and but it's just the reality it's like you can choose I mean yeah I mean you can choose to probably work for a family member's like 
corporation or something where you you aren't having much interaction with people that are different from you, but I think that seems unlikely for the general population. Yeah. So mm -hmm. either way, something something will come up for people. Yeah. For Life sure. might teach people. Yeah. Um, are there any other programs at Western besides the ones that you've kind of mentioned and um, touched on that you feel do a good job of promoting social justice and breaking down these um, systems of institutionalized oppression for marginalized students on campus? I can't really speak for uh, general programs because I really only have experience in communication studies and it's really only been an international studies minor. It's really only been like particular professors that I've kind of had conversation with or like that they make up that they're personally invested in bringing up topics even kind of forcefully within their curriculum, kind of what I was talking about earlier, yeah. um, and bringing the things that matter to them most because they're so embedded within the system of like academia mm -hmm. um, and they often talk about too how how there are challenges with being with the pressures of having to like produce scholarly work and like publish things that it's like you are kind of disconnected from the work that's happening on the ground so they do bring in those topics but I can't confidently really say that there are any other programs um, that that truly do this work mm -hmm. besides within the ESJ program yeah and yeah I don't I have a lot more examples of like things that are done wrong than I right. do that are done right. So yeah. Right. What about any like student affairs programs on campus? Like, are there any like support systems um, or things that you see um, outside of just the academic side? Yeah, I th I think we do. Like, the more I've learned working in the Career Services Center, I mean, I learn about the resources that we have to offer students. But again, it's like the same particular. Like, we have these things, these structures in place. You visit the website. We have like a multitude of offices: Student Outreach Services, Academic Advising Center, Co Counseling Center, Disability Resources, Financial Aid, Prevention and Wellness, and so forth. But um, Ethnic Student Center, you know, AS Club Activities Office. It's just there's not much like outreach done to really reach out to those particular most affected. It's just we're tossed in this pot thinking that we all have equal access to these things and it's the people that need the most that aren't reaching these resources that I think more can be done systemically to reach out to these students so that they know about them before they have to go looking for them, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then also ultimately before they're, they drop out mm -hmm. and aren't getting to them in a, when they're in a really bad place. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the only way the system thrives is like if they didn't even have these things in place, we'd be in a worse place. But since we do, we can point to them and say, oh, you're a student of color, you're struggling. You should be at the Ethnic Student Center. They have everything. But instead inspecting like, what is it that these places actually have, you know? And like, are they underfunded? Are they under, you know, like they don't have enough like faculty to actually run the facilities but yet main campus is saying oh you have a disability just go to the disability resources center i'm sure they'll help you out or they'll figure out what you need but rather um rather focusing on the symptoms actually looking at the source mm -hmm. of like no like there there are real things and yeah mm -hmm. not having to be the one affected by it having to advocate for yourself in something larger because it's really overwhelming and as I've learned and realized, it's like, this is not my job. Like, I am not supposed to be doing what I'm doing right now, but I have to because, again, I'm functioning in a place that isn't designed for people like me, so. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that, um, that you have a lot more examples of programs and structures that are in place that don't promote social justice. Are there any big specific ones that you can think of um, at Western? Yeah, I kind of mentioned that, particularly looking at like our ethnic student center, um, how there are differing realities with what they stand for versus the outcome of it. But something I've learned to realize is like, yeah, they are very under resource, like they don't have as many resources that they need. We're in the basement. Like they're really, the university is not doing much for them to actually really um, survive and actually be utilized by the number of students of color on this campus. And there used to be a College of Ethnic Studies on this campus years ago, one of the first, I want to say second, universities that had one following San Francisco State. And understanding like that history of like the, dis 
the fact that ethnic College of Ethnic Studies has been dismantled from our university. That's a history that a lot of people don't know. And like questioning why um, is something very important. I think just like really inspecting different aspects of like, okay, studying abroad office. Like, I don't know what it's really called, but the study abroad um, system. It's like we want more students to study abroad, but we're not really inspecting why it's so inaccessible and what it is that they're doing and, and how they're poorly promoting and like um, their events or like their their programs on our campus. What mm -hmm. is it? Is it furthering like white supremacy internationally? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, or how do we, you know, give students of color opportunity um, to experience mm -hmm. these um, these things? Yeah. There's this like saying that says like the weird only study abroad. I think it's like the white, the the economically privileged, the something. No, the the white, the educated, the something RD. But yeah, basically a small select of people, like a very small demographic that have the ability to do these things. And how does that impact our relations internationally? And when we do these questions, yeah, yeah, for sure. So those are just a little bit. Yeah. Is there anything that you would say to the president of the university or any faculty or administration um, in regards to social justice to try and change things like anything that you think is super prevalent or you would just want you'd want to say to them? Yeah, uh, I don't know, just like one thing, but uh, be willing to make a risk and actually like really give students the ability to voice their opinions because I'm sure if you talk to some students that are affected by the, a lot of these issues um, they would be able to draw from their personal experiences of this university like don't just fall into like statistics of what's you know the stats of what the university is go out there and actually uh, value um, student voices and break the current structures like mm -hmm. but I mean these aren't things that <laughs> people and you know I don't know yeah just like make risks yeah actually listen to the real problems of people yeah you know and value their stories and don't devalue their their struggles and use it to actually uh, help with decision making it's like we're kind of like oh we're kind of like oh yeah we're listening to you all but it's like on the back end it's like decisions already been made but we just had to had to hear your voice though. So you had something to say. Pretending to care. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Genuinely care and know that this will be hard. And like, don't think you're coming into this from like a blank slate. Like actually be willing to investigate the demands and the work that has been done by students that have been pushed out and been silenced. Um, you know, from the, the president that had been in office. Like we're starting from something. We're not starting from nowhere and yeah give room for people to speak up definitely well thank you so much for talking with me today um yeah i really appreciate you and your insight yeah and no yeah no thanks yeah. for um, interviewing me yeah <laughs>